I'm the CEO and founder of uh, TTSGP, the racing series, and an adjunct to that, uh, we have a spare parts uh, and bike business called Mavizen, which is here to really help people get to the grid. And uh, we're here today at Honolulu Electrics uh, to really present our TTX02, which is a bike that we're running in the North American Championship uh, with uh, Workstat, who are a South Fran San Francisco based team and they've taken part in our championship and they are now they have now qualified for our uh, world final in uh, Albacete so you see the bike there uh, this actually is 001 uh, so the American team are the very first bike uh, we've now have five bikes uh, which you'll all see at Albacete on the, on, on the grid and uh, they've all improved and moved forward and, uh, and it's been great The race series came first. Now, what happened is that we built the race series and very soon it turned out that a lot of teams wanted to enter but they didn't have a clue how to do that. Right, where are we going to get their bikes from? Right. Uh, even here, you come to Hollywood Electric, you look at the kind of profile of bikes they have here. Uh, I mean, some of them are great products but they are not race ready, let's say. They're not race material. And one of the things that we wanted is we didn't we always set TTSUP out to be not a race you do in a university car park. You know, you're at some of the biggest tracks in the world, in front of crowds, on TV, you've got to put on a great show. So already we were setting a minimum standard for the technology, which was actually quite high. So what we discovered was that we needed to help teams get to the grid. So that's how Mavizen came about. Um, one of our big innovations has been also the fact that our rules are now being driven by a wiki concept. So we have uh, we've just we just closed our wiki for 2011, and we'll be announcing those rules very shortly. So we had something like 120 people from 30 countries contribute. With actually some ideas were pretty freaking good about how to make our racing better. So what we're doing is trying to keep our racing as current and as fresh as possible because the technology is moving so quickly. It's beyond any. Uh, uh, single body's ability to keep track of what the hell's going on. I mean, we can't keep track of what's going on. So we've really tried to embrace the community in a way to keep our racing safe and you know keep pushing the envelope forward. So our, our tagline is "Be part of it," and it's something we keep on uh, pushing. As they pass by, the motorcycles only making a slight whirring sound, sort of a wound up uh, uh, sound of uh, more of a chain noise, I guess you could say, than anything else that you can hear off of these machines. So as they work their way down through the kink now, through turn 11 in the carousel, they have closed up. Just the sound is, is very... Uh Jet engine. Jet engine, right? For these particular ones. Because the, they're air cooled, mm -hmm. they have a sound going in, you have a chain noise, you have road noise, but the sound overall is not unpleasant to anybody who's ridden it. Honestly, my experience has been, I'm, at being impartial as possible, most people who make fun of the sound are people who've never heard it. They are making fun of some kind of caricature of what they imagine the sound would be. And they say, oh, it's some kind of Zimmer frame motorized wheelchair thing it's going to be it's nothing like that at all anybody who heard it we, we at Infineon we had 30,000 people watching the show and not one of them came back after said oh that sounded lame my kids are growing up I don't think they have got, they're going to have the same relationship with sound that we you have we have already we are already old I'm 38 and I'm old in the context of this thing one of the things about TTHGP has been that it's, it's uh, more than anything else it's been a sport for the young if you look at our teams, look at our chief engineers are like mid twenties. The bike has one moving part in it, right? So that means all the expertise you need is software, electronics, and chemistry. Basically, not really about valve clearances and clearing out oil filters and all that. That's not really where it's at. And these guys actually don't care about sound either. What they care about is performance. Now, in the combustion world, you have to make a virtue of the sound because you can't do anything about it. Actually, so what are you going to do? Pretend it doesn't exist? So you, you're going to blow it up. You're going to—it's a marketing thing. I, I do marketing. If you can't deal with it, it becomes a feature, not a bug, right? <laughs> and that's what the sound issue is.
But the reality is, and you're very lucky in America because you're, uh, you know, you've got a lot of land and the tracks are where they are and sound may not be an issue that it is here, but I think you're not that far behind where we are in Europe, where urbanization is now creeping up, up to the fringes of the track. And even if a track's been there a hundred years and this guy's just built this massive condo complex, the rights of the condo owners is going to trump the rights of the track. So right now we have limited uh, days on uh, noise. Uh, a, a good example is uh, Nürburgring, actually. A Nürburgring has uh, noise uh, measurement things connected to the federal government in Berlin. So if the meters go above a certain point, they get a call. And they have, I think, three warnings a year, three strikes. And then if they're still loud, they will get shut down that day. That event is done. All right? And they're not the only ones. You, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You go in these beautiful, I mean, you're blessed with some really beautiful national parks. How can you go in with like two stroke dirty ass things up these pristine mountains, belching out what you're belching out and making the kind of noise that you're making? That's not real either. That, that can't go on. So, so really, TTHP is the leading edge of a much larger movement, which is going to converge and whether you like it or not, change is coming. Uh, next year in 2011, we're growing the series. We'll have more bikes, uh, more races, and we're also looking to expand into Asia. But we're making those announcements in due course.